All right, thanks, Kent. Uh, really excited about this opportunity coming up uh, tomorrow in College Station. Uh, Texas A&M coming off a great win over Florida on the road. Uh, have a great guard play uh, in Taylor and Radford. And then I thought Marble for them in their front court was terrific uh, in their opening SEC win. So they present a lot of challenges, uh, very physical, uh, disciplined team. But again, we're excited about the opportunity to go on the road and try and get back on the winning track. Yeah, I mean, just going back and looking at the Kentucky film, you guys look pretty, you know, confident in the half court on offense. Do so you think you guys have made some pretty good progress there in the first couple games of SEC play? I, I think much improved there, Glenn. Even when you look back at the first half of the Arkansas game, and it'll sound crazy. Uh, we shot 29%. I think we were 10 to 34, but I, I thought we ran good offense. I thought we just did a poor job of finishing some plays, but we didn't turn the ball over. Uh, a big key uh, to being more efficient offensively is taking care of the ball. You look at the first two SEC games, we have 19 turnovers combined. Uh, that, that's a good number for us. Uh, obviously, that'll be a huge key tomorrow night against one of the best teams in the country at forcing turnovers. Uh, but I thought our execution was much improved on the offensive end uh, at Kentucky. Screening uh, was was very good. I thought Adam Miller, his movement without the basketball was, was the best it's been all season, and that led to some good looks for him. And I, I loved – we hit 11 threes in the game. All 11 were assisted upon. Uh, means you're executing, sharing the ball, and obviously guys stepping up and, and making some plays to knock those down. Uh, you kind of answered it already, but uh, but I was going to ask you, what was the best thing you saw that came out of the game? I know you said you were proud of them and stuff like that, but just the way they, they, they hung in there maybe, or and like you said, execution was very good. I think from you know, specifically to basketball, the offensive execution, taking care of the basketball, uh, getting some clean looks uh, from behind the three-point line uh, for KJ, Ace, and, and Cam Hayes as well. Uh, but more importantly to me right now, we're, we're trying to build our foundation. And, and for us, it has to be toughness, how you compete, uh, unselfishness, how we build a team. And, and I think we've made great strides there. Uh, still a long, long way to go. Uh, but I, I don't think you can get better as a team until you have those core values really instilled. Uh, if you don't compete, if you don't play hard, if you don't have any toughness, if you're selfish, there, there's limited opportunity to, to improve. So I think we've uh, made big strides there, uh, and we got to continue to build on that. Hey, Coach, just to piggyback on that, that was kind of the statement you made the other night. Is that more like everybody, or are there some specific guys that showed you that that can show the other guys? Yeah, no, I, I just think as a team, and you know, we've talked about it all year, and you know, we're almost at the halfway point now, so – it's really a wait. It's really a waste of time to talk anymore about you know a new roster, new roster, twelve new guys, all that. But as as we we talked early, you know, you look at the first couple games of the year, we we clearly look like you know just a bunch of guys thrown together trying to figure it out. And as I say, we still have a long way to go there. But but I am pleased with the progress uh, and how hard we need to work, how we prepare for games. Uh, what the mental focus needs to be like uh, in scouting meetings, all those little details that, that we believe lead to consistent habits and consistent performance, uh, we're showing improvement there. So uh, I think that's really important for us as we move forward. Yeah, Coach, um, just what did you see from how y'all defensive rebounded against, uh, obviously, Sheboy and Kentucky, and then how important is that going to be for the A&M game where they're playing 20 seconds? Yeah, that's correct. Um, the first 30 minutes was not very good on the defensive glass. Uh, the last 10 minutes was, was very good on the defensive glass. Uh, overall, you know, Tashibwe got seven offensive rebounds, you know, right around his average, which is really incredible. Uh, I thought we did a good job of boxing him out. Where we have to continue to improve is gang rebounding. We have to rebound with all five defenders. Uh, 
we didn't get that done at the level it needs to be done. I hope we can show improvement there uh, because it's going to be a big key to tomorrow night's game. Uh, we actually, believe it or not, uh, held them below their average uh, from an offensive rebounding standpoint, but still uh, too many second shot opportunities there. Uh, Texas A&M, very physical on the glass. Uh, you're, you're correct. They are 22nd in the country there. Uh, so we'll have to be much improved there, in my opinion, to have a chance to win on the road tomorrow. Hey, Coach, it seems like this has been the same starting five you run the last five games out now. Is this kind of the group that you're, when everybody's healthy, that you're going to move with going forward? Or is there still opportunity for other guys to, you know, play well and make sure. your way into the starting five? Yeah, there's always opportunity. You know, we, we try to make every practice competitive, uh, especially, uh, again, I think roles will evolve more with this team than any team I've ever coached just because everyone is new. Everyone learns at a different speed. Everyone's uh, play, you know, some guys are playing well right now. Some are struggling. So I think it's always changing depending on how practice goes. Uh, and I think if I'm a guy who's not in the role I want to be in right now on our team, I would look to a guy like Cam Hayes who had a DMP uh, in a game earlier in the season and is now starting and has been our most efficient guard uh, by the numbers. And so uh, I, I think it'll continue to change uh, rotations and so forth. Uh, what we're going to do whatever we feel gives us the best chance to win. Are you still comfortable with running those sort of three guard lineups, especially with, with the starters, um, just because those are smaller lineups, but at the same time, it sort of gives you that extra uh, boost of quickness over, over even some of these bigger opponents like Arkansas and Kentucky? It's a great question, one we, we spend a lot of time uh, discussing. Uh, we're not great at everything, obviously. Uh, I, I wish we were. If we were, we'd be 40-0 and 0 and we'd win the national title. What gives us the best opportunity to win? Um, and we got to identify those, and sometimes it's going to be based on the other team's personnel as well. So I think we have to be flexible there always be willing to put a lineup out on the floor that we feel gives us the best chance to win. I, I think when you look at some of the adjustments of having multiple playmakers on the floor, there's been huge improvement to our offensive efficiency since we made that move. There's been improvement in our assist to turnover ratio, improvement in our three-point shooting. Uh, you are sacrificing a little bit on the defensive glass, which is a huge area of concern of ours. So. Don't have an exact answer for you, but game to game, you're trying to weigh those things and, and try and figure out what can give you the greatest return on investment and, and the best chance to win. Going back to rebounding, um, at the 7.45 mark, I believe it was, timeout, uh, Sheway had 16 rebounds. The rest, your whole team had 15. Did, did y'all do something to try to take him out or do better or – was it just a, uh, just getting more execution on the rebounding? Sean, I think a couple things. Number one, I thought we defended better uh, in our man-to-man. -man. I did think overall we did a better job of boxing out. But in those last eight minutes, I thought our guards, Trey Hannibal especially, did a better job of crashing in there in a term we would call rebound down. Uh, you, know, you go back and study the film, there were too many possessions uh, where we had guards out around the three-point line essentially just spectating and, and watching the game. And for us, we need all five guys on the defensive glass. And so I think we made an improvement there later in the game, uh, but it's going to be a huge factor uh, in tomorrow night's game for sure. Yeah, I mean, just what, what is Trey's ability to just relentlessly pursue the rim on offense do for you guys, you know, completely, just totally offensively? It just uh, seems like there's, you know, ability for other guys to crash the rim and, and get opportunities. Just what does he uh, do in that aspect that really helps you guys? Well, he's been much improved since we came back from the Christmas break and, and has played exceptionally well in the two games so far. Uh, I think his explosiveness and ability to get to the rim and then to finish those plays, you look at the, the eight layups that he made against Arkansas. I had several more uh, against Kentucky. Uh, and then also his assist rate is good. He knows he needs to cut down on the turnovers, uh, but his ability to get the ball in the paint and hopefully draw 
defenders uh, can help open up some easier sh perimeter threes uh, for some of our other guards in KJ. And so his emergence here out of the break has, has been a welcome addition <laughs> for us. Yeah, Coach, um, how do y'all, how have y'all gone about, you know, managing and kind of exploring the, how the point guard position is ran when Juice Hill is not on the court, just with Hannibal, Hayes, and so on and so forth? Yeah, I think we have multiple combo guards that can play at the one or the two. And as we talked about, having multiple playmakers on the floor, ball handlers, uh, has been good for our offense. Uh, so I'm, I'm confident in, in all of those players you mentioned and their ability to run our offense, uh, to make the right plays. And the area we got to be better is, is our pressure out front on the defensive end at the point guard position. Uh, I think that's an area that, that really hurt us in the game the other night. A couple things. What do you see when you watch Radford on film? And do you have any history with Buzz? other than, I guess, who hired him? Um, well, with Radford, he's shooting it well from three, really explosive driver. Uh, and him and Taylor both, they live at the free throw line. You look at Texas A&M, they're relentless in their assault of the rim. That's why they're – I hadn't looked at the numbers today, but I know going into yesterday, they led the country in free throw attempts, second in makes. Um, but both – really you know all lead caliber guards uh, that, that can beat you in multiple ways and then uh, with coach Williams uh, trying to think back my, my first year as an assistant at Murray State uh, we played as Marquette team uh, in a game to go to the sweet 16 uh, in Louisville I had Jay Crowder Darius Johnson Odom really physical rugged tough hard-nosed team All right, thanks so much.